Hey, welcome back, everybody. Of course, you know me. My name is Dr. Keith McNally. This is Coach's Corner. I'm going to get this right. I'm here with Tony Runkel. Correct. And Steve Webb. And I do appreciate that, Tony. These two people have a fantastic story. And at some point, I'm probably going to go in reverse order and put them back on the question guy because there's a story behind the story. These two are authors, and we're going to find out what it is they wrote and why it's so important. Let's get the conversation started. Tony and Steve, please introduce yourselves. My name is Tony Runkel and uh, grew up in Lucca, Italy. My mother was Italian, was an army brat, traveled around the world. Eventually found my way to the University of Southern California Cinema School, which is where I met my writing partner and very good friend of many years, Steve Webb. Um, I worked for many years in the television and movie industry, mostly movies, writing screenplays, and uh, transitioned at a certain point into young adult novels, which I did with Steve, and he can tell you a little bit about himself and that as well. Steve? Sure. Um, yeah, I uh, grew up in the mid Midwest in South Dakota. I was born in England, but only stayed there for a little short time. And I grew up in the Midwest, and then uh, after I finished my undergraduate degree, I came out to USC where I met Tony. Um, I met her on the first day of the first class and we were both uh, writing. It was a writing class and, and we kind of sort of saw that each of us had something that that was interesting to the other. Uh, although we didn't start working together because I went off and did other things as well. I worked for uh, the TV show called Biography for a while. I wrote for Encyclopedia Britannica. I I did this and that, and and uh, finally it was uh, one of uh, we. Then Tony came together and called me up one day. She had just had uh, a baby uh, not that long before, and said, "You know, I want to write something, but I know if I try to do it on my own, it's not going to get done." So we need we need, and we need somebody. And I had a small kid at the time too. So we we both sort of said, "Okay, if we work together." then none of us, neither of us can bail on it without having uh, a big conversation. So, so we figured out that, that maybe to work together, we could uh, combine forces and, and write some stuff. And we did write a couple of screenplays and, you know, they got optioned and as Hollywood is sometimes they, they don't go too far after that. But uh, um, it was Tony's friend who, who uh, suggested that we start writing young adult novels and, uh, we wrote our first one a couple of years ago uh, called Glitter Girl. It came out um, in uh, I think 2014, and then uh, and then we started work on what we thought would be a quick little fun book about pirates uh, called uh, The Pirates' Curse: Curse of uh, uh, Brigands of the Compass Rose. And uh, it took a long time to write it, but finally it has found a home and just got published on September 28th. So we're very excited about that. We just had our first uh, book reading not so long ago and uh, had a very good response and a lot of good uh, feedback from readers and things like that. So that's so that kind of brings you up to speed to where we are now. Well, then I want to turn back the clock a little bit, if that's OK. And we're going to go sure. back to Glitter, Gl Glitter Girl. Yes. Sure. And we're going to go back to what was the inspiration behind that book and tell us who the the niche market is for that for that read well, and then what was the inspiration for it well i would say just basically that both of us have daughters and so we feel very strongly about empowering young women young people in general um what as steve said both of us were doing stuff in the entertainment industry once I had a kid, I started reading all this YA stuff and was so intrigued by it. I just thought, this is some of the best storytelling out there. I fell in love with it. Um, we, When we decided to sit down and write for the YA market, we wanted to tell a story that was empowering, to our, that our daughters could pick up and, and read and be inspired by. So um, we threw around some ideas. It was Steve who saw this very intriguing article, which I'll let, you, let him tell you about, that uh, you know, kind of sparked this idea for us. 
and which is how we came up with Glitter Girl, which was originally called Alpha Girl, which you will understand when Steve tells you a little bit about how, where the idea came from. Right. We, Steve? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I had seen an article online because we were just thinking, okay, what kinds of things do middle school girls go through? And, and you know, so, so much about middle school is figuring out where I am in the pecking order of life, right? And so we we found an article, uh, and then there was, there's also a, a 60 Minutes um, um, episode that had uh, this company that um, found like the very popular girl at a school and would just ply her with products um, that they wanted to be become popular and it was it was sort of very early version of being an online influencer hmm. uh, and uh and we were not in love with that idea we thought it was kind of scummy to use a girl's popularity to sell stuff but and and we thought well what if we had one of these girls who was very popular in her school and we had a friend who was maybe not quite so popular and is kind of still trying to find her way. Uh, and we we said we gave one girl this gigantic opportunity. How would that affect the friendship with the other girl? And and it was you know because junior high is like one of those times oh, we still call it junior high anyway. <laughs> one of those times when you have uh, friendships that may not last into high school, right? That their friendships from, you know, the cul-de-sac or down the street or whatever. And they were friends because they were geographically close to you. And I um, was seeing that happen in my own neighborhood, you know, with my daughter and her friends. And it's at, at that young age, I mean, these kids that you came up with that maybe you just happened to live next door to and be friends with since you were, you know, two years old, you get to junior high or middle school and they start, you know, friendships start shifting. Kids start finding out what they're interested in. They get caught up in group, popular groups, not so popular groups. Um, and in this world of social media, it's devastating for young people to see, they're, they're constantly saying, oh my gosh, some of my friends went out this weekend and I didn't get invited. And to a to a young person, um, losing those friendships or seeing the friendships shift can be very emotionally devastating for that. Mm. So we decided to take this premise of these this advertising company that was doing this kind of insidious thing and apply it to the shifting friendships that we saw happening with our own kids mm. as they were going through this during the process going from little kids to you know young young women so so you're telling me that this book came out in 2014 yes mm -hmm. so stuff like this and for the sake of conversation we're now in 2023 so almost 10 years gone past and so we recognize really the impact that social media had because now it's probably even worse in 2023. And this is like 10 years ago. How does the story evolve then between, because your focus is to middle school and it hits me at home because my girl is 13 years old. She's in middle school, God bless her. Um, and so I know some of the struggles, the ins and outs and, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, there was a situation when earlier this year, she got sick and couldn't do a sleepover with her friends. And so she, she felt left out and it was just a sleepover. And I'm thinking, wow, which is 10 more years and that won't be a thing anymore, I hope. But let's go back to you. How did you really evolve the characters to really appreciate, understand what was going on in their, in their lives in the book? Well, How the company you? itself, interestingly, would the girl they would target in the um, middle school, she would be the alpha girl. Okay. So it's kind of like, they sort of looked at it like a pack, you know, like a pack of animals in a way. 
which is a little distressing for these you know little human beings that are trying to find themselves. But the, the way we looked at it is, you know, we just tried to look at, at, at with everything that Steve and I write, it's really about the characters. Even in our second book, which has all this adventure and, and everything in it and magic, it's really about the characters and what they're going through. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with these characters, we had two girls that were best friends based on geography, but still were very close, but then ultimately were very different people. And so we had to examine, you know, one of them was into, you know, dressing up and looking good. The other kid was more of a theater kid. Um, So they had different tastes, but then they still wanted their friendship. And so we worked on how they negotiated this friendship. We tried not to be, you know, like, really pat and how it ended without giving anything away. We tried to be as realistic as possible. And honestly, all we had to do was look and see what was going on in our own kids' lives to to really understand that. And to look at these young people as, you know, just not look at them as just these little kids that are going through something unimportant. We looked at it as something important they were going through that was fundamentally shaping them. Yeah, not getting invited to a sleepover can be devastating when you're 13. What, you know, it's so it's it's one of those things that that girls, I, th- I think especially girls, because I think they're much more uh, other centered than than boys tend to be, because boys are, you know, they don't care as much about getting invited to sleepovers as making the basketball team. But um, I think when when girls get left out it's it's a whole world of of hurt for them and and you know it's sad because you know my daughter and i'm sure tony's daughter had experiences with that where a bunch of girls were doing something and she wasn't there and she knew it was happening but couldn't go and and that and kids at that age can also be not just girls but boys too i mean i i have a a teacher friend who teaches middle school and she says this is the cruelest age you know the kids can be really cruel at that age and I think it's part of it's they're trying to discover who they are and they want to feel important and like they belong somewhere and sometimes to get that feeling they leave other people out because it makes them feel better about themselves if they're one of the chosen ones it's in, in a particular group or it's it is it is it's complicated um, and it's painful. And as parents, you know, you read it. If you read the book, you just see that as parents, we try to help our kids as much and help them negotiate this. But ultimately, they got to kind of figure it out for themselves. Right. We, we have, I mean, both of the girls in our book come from intact families, but they're really sort of on their own in this one because they have to, you know, kind of, negotiate the terms of their friendship on their own because the parents really much as they want to help really can't this is something that the girls have to work out on their own well this this raises a question on my end only because you're talking about your own children did the two of you kind of you know ask questions or have conversations with the your 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 girls prior to writing the book and say um what would this look like in your situation? Like how much of their story is actually in your book? Well, and even in terms of the characters themselves. Well, we did name the characters after our daughters. We, okay. My daughter's name is Julia and his is Katrina. So we named them Jules and Kat. Um, the similarities kind of, you know, kind of stop there. We don't try to say, oh, this is whatever. But absolutely we asked, I know that I asked my daughter, What's the lingo that kids use? Um, how would they behave in certain situations? Um, and of course, uh, you know, he would tell me stories that happened at school. Um, so for the reality of it, we I think uh, we did talk to our kids. I, I believe you did as well, right, Steve? Sure, yeah. And and certainly, you know, it, uh, middle school is such a, a time of of change in your life that we both have very vivid memories from those days of yes. of being left out, being included. How did it feel? Uh, where am I 
in this order of uh, hierarchy at the school. And so there was a lot, you know, we could draw on from our own lives as well, I think. Yeah, it's the same story. It's just a different setting, you know, different technology. But I think everybody goes, and I think that's a part of the story too, is it's something that's relatable to everybody who's been through that transition period in their life. Um, we may not have had social media in our day, but it didn't make all those transitions and the shifting friendships and the conflicts any less painful. And we may be many more years removed from that, but we still have the memories and the feelings of that. So those things are universal. Sometimes how you tell them based on you know current times, you have to make some adjustments for that. But the basic thing is the basic feelings, the basic emotions, the basic those are universal and I think they happen to just about everybody. Absolutely. So earlier I said we we're going to turn the clock back. Now we're going to turn mm -hmm. it forward again. And the two of you wrote a new book. This has a different focus, has a different focus in terms of the age of the of the characters and even the story itself. Can you can you touch on that a bit? Well, the second book is, and this is the one that took us a long time to write. And I, Steve had talked about that a little bit. It, this took us longer to write because it ultimately is going to be a series of three books. This okay. is called The Pirate's Curse. That's the name of the trilogy. And the first book is called the Brigands of the Compass Rose. Now, when you're writing a trilogy, we you have to think about what's going to happen in the second book and the third book. And how, so we had to do a lot of working to plant a lot of things in the first book. And it's a story about a pirate curse. It takes it's contemporary. It's a contemporary story. But wait, wait, there's pirate, pirate curses in contemporary. There are world? pirate curses in this, indeed. There's pirate history. We did a lot of research about sailing, sword fighting, pirate history. Um, so all the characters that are in this story, the pirate story, the pirates themselves, people who actually lived in the past. So we just took the mystery of their tale that wasn't filled in and we created a story out of that. Again, the, it's an adventure, it's fun, it's dramatic, it's scary at times, but at the heart are a group of kids, and in this case, kids that don't have a, a solid family background. So, Wait, you, you said know, it's scary, so we're, what kind of scary is scary? Not for, scary like, for oh, teen, or for not scary like saw scary or anything okay. like that, but you know, just that you know, you're dealing in a curse and... Uh, there are some, you know, nefarious characters in it. And the kids have to, you know, fight yeah, their way out of situations. Yeah, and they're, and they're in some life-threatening situations toward the end of the book that, that, that you know, you, you feel like uh, that it could go either way, that, that they might not necessarily survive these, these uh, escapades. Wow. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's heightened, of course, because it's, it's, it's of, in, essence of fantasy because it but it's rooted in reality um i mean it, it, it is not so far removed from glitter girl because it's still about kids trying to figure out who exactly they are and how they fit into the world mm -hmm. and the the main character of this book bonnie when she finds out who she is it's it's kind of very devastating to her because uh, she is the one who is sort of um, part involved in this curse of this pirate. And and that's uh, a tough pill to swallow for her. Uh, but um, I'm not going to say exactly how she's involved. Oh, don't give it away. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to give, give the, the, uh, the details. But, but I mean, it, it's about finding out who you are, how you fit in where you stand among these people and and finding people who are your allies and that's sort of what the first book is about as well no, but you took a different you took a different approach this time because you said yes. the characters come from broken homes that's whereas right. the first book they came from pretty good homes like right. very structured case, homes you know these are kids who are descendant of pirates like the particular famous pirates pirate uh 
Calico Jack Rackham, if you know put your pirate history, Mary Reed and Bonnie, women pirates, which our daughters were very intrigued by the idea that there had actually been women pirates in the day. And um, so we thought, who, who would these kids be that would be the descendants of these pirates? Because, you know, these pirates had kids and you never hear what happened to them. And we decided these, these kids are the kids that are like foster kids, kids that are in, in juvie, kids that are, out, you know, out on the streets, kids that um, have sort of been left behind by society thought of by society as irreparable and really good kids that just didn't get the chance in life. You know, our main char character, Bonnie Hartwright, she was abandoned as an infant. She doesn't know her background. She has gone from foster home to foster home to foster home. Um, and she's a, tr she's a troubled kid. And a lot of these kids that go to this sailing school are troubled kids. Um, and so what we try to do, again, is about empowerment. Kids, uh, uh, I have a family member who's worked in the foster system for many years and um, has told us stories. It's like, these are fantastic kids. They just don't get a fair, fair shake, you know? Um, so we thought, what happens if we put these kids in a situation where they can find their self-worth and their self and their tribe? you know, and then they can blossom from that. And that's what we really try to do with our kids. In fact, one of the, we got a really great review from Book Life and they talked about the surprising depth that's in our story. It's an adventure, um, but it's got a lot of heart. It's got a lot of depth and you really feel for these kids. You know, I've had a couple of people who read the book that said they were just moved to tears by some you know, and that's what we want to do. We want to connect with the kids that read this and might think, hey, you know, people have told me I'm not worth it, mm -hmm. but maybe I am. Maybe I've got something that makes me worthwhile. And so these are the kids that, that populate Earth and that we work with. So. Well, let me ask. Exactly. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, I was going to say, at, at, at the same time, you know, we fold that into this really big adventure that that you know could be um, a big screen uh, popcorn movie, right? So we're we're sort of taking the idea of of you know the the classic swashbuckling pirate story where you know there's sword fights and there's sea battles and and all of that kind of stuff, and then and then putting these sort of unexpected characters into it and see how living that life, living that life of adventure um, makes them blossom. I always love stories about ordinary people put into extraordinary situations and digging deep inside themselves and finding what they're capable of. I just feel like that's just such a, I love those kind of stories. And I think that that's what this story is on it with adventure and magic and curses and history and sailing and swashbuckling it's got all of that in it well we have your first book middle school mm -hmm. this book about high school students who are in that age range what's next three well, books three books three books three how do books. you get from an idea for one book and it's getting good reviews and then broaden that picture to encompass two more because you can't i'm assuming you can't keep the same story I and mean, the same characters got to evolve and so right. new challenges have to evolve too how do you push that story forward into a second and, and you said a third it's a trilogy well okay. certainly you know a, a lot of sequels if you will are just that they make the first movie with no expectations or the first book with no expectations and everybody loves it. So the writer has to come up with something new for the people to do. That's not how we approached it. We said, this is going to be a three book arc. There's, there's a main story in the book about what these characters need to do. And they find out 
about midway through this first book what what it is that they need to do and and they don't quite accomplish that fat that feat in the first book and in in, in fact the, the first book ends with a, a great deal of uncertainty of how, how they're going to move on from here and uh so we've always thought you know this that won't be resolved in the first book so we 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 have a big arcing story that is going to take three books to resolve and and each part of the story has different um like for ex for example the 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 first book um focuses a lot on bonnie discovering who she is but the second book is going to focus on now that she knows who she is, what is she going to do with that information? Right. Um, there's, there's an immediate crisis that they have to deal with at the end of the first book, but there's a lot more that needs to be resolved before um, that's going to be subsequent to book two. And then it won't be until book three that the final conflict, if you will, will, will be resolved. So, and you know, we're speaking in vague terms because the book has so many twists in it. If we say too much of what, there's this overarching pirate curse, 300 year old pirate curse that these brigands of the compass roads have to deal with, okay? But inside of that, there's a story of each of the characters as well. And we kind of, you know, marry the world, these foster kids with the world of, um, magic and root working and conjuring. But again, the magic is just part of the story and it's not an overriding part of the story. Kids have to learn on their own how to survive, how to rise to the occasion. So magic is a part of it, but not a huge part of it. But as Steve was saying, we do have this overarching tale with a, a main evil, a main bad guy that these kids are ultimately going to have to, you know, fight and see <laughs> if they win. And, you know, and be vanquished, right? And, and, and our story, and again, we, we try to root it in reality and you just don't know, is everybody gonna make it or not? And this is why it's, an old, it's a book for older kids. I would say middle school to high school. Our previous book was grade school to middle school. This, depending on the maturity of your kid, would be middle school to high school. Yeah. And, and we certainly have a lot of adult fans yeah, as well. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, many adults have read it and enjoyed it thoroughly. So it's certainly, you, you don't, nobody's going to check ID. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. Well, let me ask you this question. With the amount of time that we have left, you said you're, from a writer's perspective, your passion, your purpose was one of empowerments, one of empowerment mm -hmm. for for young adults. And so how are you, how are the two of you individually and working together using that as your mission to make you or help you or drive you to write that right book, that book that you know is going to be empowering for young adults? How does that work with each of you? Well, I do want to say that, and Steve and I have talked about this. I had a very troubled childhood. Not, a, not that I was a troubled kid that got in trouble or anything like that, but um, very bad childhood. I was pretty much on my own by the time I was 14 in a lot of ways. And um, and so there's a lot that's that I feel like, you know, writing is therapy too, you know? And uh, there's a lot that I can relate to about how kids feel and self-esteem. And, you know, when you come from a household where your your parents don't even stick around, you know, you feel like, well, I'm not worth sticking around for. So you kind of uh, bring that baggage with you. And I, you know, Steve and I, with we've raised our kids. I, you know, I, I really wanted my daughter to have a completely different childhood than that. And she and I know there are a lot of kids out there that still have that kind of happy childhood. And I want them to read this and say, maybe see themselves in it and say, hey, you know, maybe I can do this. Maybe there's something that I'm good at, that there maybe there's some good that I can do. And that's kind of where I come from. And I 
talked, Steve and I talked a lot about that. Um, Steve has his own point of view on how we're approaching all this, I'm sure. Right, sure, yeah, I, th I think I agree with Tony that that the, I think the central message of this book and the last book is, is that the message to the kids are, you matter, you're important, you fit in. We just need to find out where and how. That's all. But but don't even think for a second that you don't matter. I mean, we we, ha we have one line in the book that Tony wrote that I love, and, and it's one of the characters thinks is thinking about herself. She says, I, I don't know which is worse, mattering not at all or mattering this much. And because she, the way she matters now can get her killed and get her friends killed. Mm -hmm. um, but but the the fact that they matter is important and that and that she now realizes that she matters and and she matters in a way that she had never expected to matter but she matters and every kid matters and that's sort of the central message of the the all of our writing i think then i think there's no better way to end this conversation than to tell our audience that they matter regardless of their age tony steve Thank you for being on Coach's Corner, ma'am. I was just going to say, we also had some good news we wanted to share. Oh, well, then interrupt. Shall we share please. our news? Yes, please. <laughs> we uh, we just made a deal with uh, uh, O'Sullivan Productions, which is the company did, that did Vikings, Vikings Valhalla, The Tudors, last year's Banshees of Ed Sheeran, uh, to develop this into a television series. So they've optioned all three of the books. They got the other the outlines for the other two. So we're very excited about that. Well, I'm excited Coming too. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations cool. to both of you. Then that's no better way of ending this conversation. Thank you both for joining me on Coach's Corner. For those of you who are Absolutely. watching and listening, I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye.